morning and welcome to worship today at Western Boulevard Presbyterian Church. It's a joy to have you with us, especially if you're visiting with us today, we welcome you and hope you find in this time an encounter with the living, loving God. I want to thank Julian for offering his gift of music this morning and he'll be sharing some more later in the service and we thank Julian for offering that for us. You'll all find a um, fellowship pads on the, along the center aisle of your pew. If you wouldn't mind, take a moment and sign those and pass it down so that you might be able to tell whom you're worshiping with and greet them by name after the service. You'll see in your purple insert there are a number of things happening in the life of our church. Uh, one reminder, especially today, uh, today is the last day to get your photo taken um, for the pictorial directory. And so if you would, if you haven't had a chance to do that or if you've uh, been reminded by that by Becky Burmester, maybe through some nice phone calls, um, you'll, they'll be in the, my, uh, my office after worship, a uh, chance to get those taken. So we hope you can, we've had a lot of great photos already taken and we're looking forward to being able to share those with you as a part of the directory. So thank you for all of those who have taken part in that. And then another reminder is that we still have uh, Western Boulevard t-shirts available. Uh, you can, those are, that's a fundraiser that's helping the youth uh, with their trips this summer. So look for that and you can see information in the bulletin but how you can contact Anna Rob and, and order yours uh, for, for you. We use those a lot this past week on the um, middle school retreat and there are other lots. It's been neat to see folks wearing them during Bible school. So think about getting a t-shirt and that helps support our young people in their activities uh, throughout this summer. Let's continue our worship now. I invite Robert to lead us in our call to worship. Please stand according to your ability and let us join in the call to worship this morning with words from Psalm 77. I will call to mind the deeds of the Lord. I will remember your wonders of old. I will, I will meditate, meditate on, on all your work and muse on your, your mighty deeds. deeds. Your way, O God, is holy. What God is so great as our God? You, you are the God who works wonders. wonders. You, you have displayed your might among the peoples.
friends, we all sin. We're aware of that. But we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. So we can, with confidence, draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in time of need. Let us confess our sins in unison using the words that appear in the bulletin, followed by silent, personal prayers of confession. Let us pray. Merciful God, we confess that we desire what is not your will. We fear failure and cling to unquestioned habits. We are truly sorry and repent of what we have done and what we have not done. Show us the path of your prophetic way. Open our eyes to new ventures. Help us love our neighbors as ourselves. Forgive us and renew us in the name of life abundant. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. May the God of mercy, who forgives all our sins, strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. And as forgiven people, let us speak to each other and exchange words and signs of peace. May the peace of Christ be with you. seated. I would like to invite the children in the congregation to come up front and join me here on the steps for a couple minutes. We'll sit up here today, I think. Morning. How are you guys? Good to see you. Hi. Here come a couple more. I'm just going to apologize right now that if I yawn while we're doing this, it's not you, okay? I had a fun week this past week. Here, come here, you can have a seat. With some of our middle school uh, gentlemen at Massanetta Springs, and that's in Virginia, but I'm a little tired from my week, I'm not gonna lie. And so, I, but I thought I'd tell you a little bit about what we did. There were five of us, and I think I think I only see one here today. Uh, Matthew, Matthew Fleming is here. So if you want to learn more about it, you can talk to him after the service. I don't know why the others wouldn't be here. I guess maybe they're sleeping or something. Um, but we had a lot of fun. Have you ever been to Virginia? Any of you ever been to Virginia? You've been to Texas? That, that's a lot further away than Virginia. Virginia. We had people who came from... Oh, we had people who came from Virginia, from Maryland, from Delaware, from North and South Carolina, and from Atlanta, and Michigan, and other places too. And, they, and there were about over 200 kids there. And we had lots of fun. We did, we, uh, we danced, 
we sang, we played a lot of games, we did a lot of stuff outside, and we ate. Oh, did we eat. But we also learned, you know what Pastor Frank learned how to play? Gaga ball. Do you? We have a gaga pit out here, don't we? Well, Pastor Frank got challenged by one of the other men in his group to, or actually the youth challenged the two of us to for a face-off. And so you'll be happy to know Pastor Frank won. So, uh, yes, thank you, thank you. And I had the scab on my knee to prove it. Anyway, um, what we talked about throughout the week, we talked about the theme of the week was Jesus message on the Sermon on the Mount when he calls the Beatitudes. Have you ever heard the phrase the Beatitudes? It's where Jesus says, blessed are those who are meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are those who are poor in spirit. In other words, he uses these phrases to remind us that all of those folks who, have, who, are, who are this way, God loves them. God cares for them. And then we're called to be agents of peace and mercy and love to those, all of those in the world. And it was a very special week. And the reason I wanted to share it with you is that one day you'll be old enough to go on that trip too. It may seem like a long way away right now, but trust me, it will go quick. And that's one of the things that's special about the church is that we have the chances to do things here at our local church at Western Boulevard but we get to do some special things as we go old, get older to do it with other people who are in other places. And the, the conference and the chance we had this week with Matthew and Keegan and Duncan and um, Adam and Lachlan, it was a lot of fun and I enjoyed it very much. Yeah. Do you? That, for two? That's great. You know what I want you all to think about is we have a couple other trips later that our youth are taking. We'll love to talk to you about them. And that's something that's special that you all eventually will get a chance to do that too. And I'm excited for that opportunity that you'll get to do those as well. So I'm gonna go home after my day today and take a nap. I'm just gonna be honest. That's gonna be my, my schedule this afternoon. Anyone else take a nap on Sundays? I think some people out there do. Um, maybe we don't. Good. Let's say a prayer together before we go. Loving and gracious God, we thank you for the many ways you call us to love and serve you and to go and be in places that gives us energy and passion. And we're grateful for those who supported the middle school youth this week to go to Massanetta Springs and have a great week. We look forward to when we all have those opportunities in the future and how it reminds us of the breadth and depth of your church and your love for us in Jesus Christ. In his name we pray, amen. The congregation says, what do we say? Thank you. You all have, head back to your, sit with your families. Have a great week. Guide us, O oh God, by your word and Holy Spirit, that in your light we may see light, in your truth find freedom, and in your will discover your peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The New Testament lesson today is from the Holy Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 9, verses 51 through 62. Listen for the word of God. When the days drew near for him to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way, they entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him, but they did not receive him because his face was set toward Jerusalem. When his disciples, James and John, saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. 
To another he said, follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable unto you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. David Lose writes, at the turning point of C.S. Lewis's beloved The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, several significant characters encourage each other with reports that Aslan, the great lion and true ruler of oppressed Narnia has reappeared to fight the evil witch. Their words of encouragement to each other are as potent as they are succinct. Aslan is on the move. In today's reading from the Gospel of Luke, something similar is happening as these verses, which open the second half of Luke's account of Jesus' ministry, herald Jesus' journey to Jerusalem and to the cross. Having preached, taught, and worked miracles, Jesus suddenly hears like a silent clarion the call to turn toward Jerusalem. And the rest of Luke's narrative depicts his steadfast journey there. In short, Jesus is on the move. While Jesus' face may be set to Jerusalem, he does not take the most direct path. In fact, there is almost no discernible logic to the collection of stories and incidents that Luke relates. And there is no easy way to identify the route Jesus followed. Luke's concern, it turns out, is primarily neither narrative nor geographical, but theological. The stories Luke shares reveal the character of Jesus and in turn the God who sent him and the mission Jesus has been sent to accomplish. Indeed, this passage which Robert has read today marks a clear demarcation in the Gospel of Luke. Earlier in this chapter, Jesus is transfigured on the mountaintop with Elijah and Moses and Peter, James, and John witness this otherworldly event. It's almost as if the transfiguration is God's way of visibly and publicly blessing his son's mission and ministry. And now, in the passage we've heard today, Jesus literally changes his posture and his position, setting his face to go to Jerusalem. It is a face of determination and commitment, fueled by the knowledge that his mission must be fulfilled through what awaits him on the cross. We might forget that hard reality when we first read these two paragraphs out of Luke. What probably hits us square in the face are Jesus' harsh rebukes to these disciples and his seemingly uncaring attitude toward a grieving man. Let the dead bury their own dead, but as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Really, Jesus? Is that the best form of pastoral care to show to this man? I have a feeling if I had said something, if I said something like that to a grieving member of this church, my stuff in the office would be out in the parking lot by the end of the day. What we come face to face with here is not a pastor with poor people skills, but a Messiah who must fulfill his mission. Elaine Heath, Elaine Heath writes, 
in this text, Jesus begins in earnest to prepare his disciples for what's ahead of them. The, time, the tone is so sober. Jesus has already begun to warn the disciples that he will be betrayed and put to death. Partnership with Jesus in his mission will require rugged commitment. The disciples must learn how to respond to rejection and persecution. To be a Christ follower is to walk the way of Jesus regardless of the outcome. And in each of these three scenes, we witness how Jesus prepares his disciples for what lies ahead of them, by showing grace, conviction, and single-mindedness. In the first scene, Jesus sends the disciples into a Samaritan village to preach the gospel. The Samaritans, we know from that famous parable, were considered outsiders to the Jewish community. And this was definitely a case of the disciples stepping out of the box to follow their teacher's instructions. But the Samaritan village did not welcome the disciples, far from it. And James and John get kind of angry and upset. Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? Jesus' followers wanted violence and retribution against those who would not receive God. But Jesus does not act as the world would act that he turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. The use of violence to enforce Christian faith is counter to the spirit of Christ. In the second scene, Jesus encounters someone who will follow him wherever he goes. It almost sounds like someone who is overtaken by the euphoria of all that is happening. Well, Jesus kind of throws cold water on his euphoric profession with the following. Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Jesus has no place to call home, no physical space that is his. He is reliant on others' hospitality. God incarnate is essentially homeless apart from the hospitality of others. What does this mean for his followers? That no one can cling to possessions and faithfully follow Christ. In the third and final scene, Jesus is met by both a man whose father has died and another who wishes to say goodbye to his family. Both are invited to follow Jesus and they profess a willingness to do so, but they need to take care of this important business first. But Jesus offers a different view. Following him requires total and singular focus, not being beholden to the past. Keith writes, commitment to discipleship leads to a testing of loyalties on every front. Jesus' shocking words about the Father's funeral seem harsh and unloving. His point is that when other loyalties to family, community, and tradition claim first place, disciples will compromise the call on their lives. In this text, the disciple is called to live in union with Christ in Christ's life and mission in the power of the Spirit. That is, disciples are called to a sanctified life, setting their faces toward Jerusalem, utterly abandoning themselves to the love and the purposes of God. The journey to Jerusalem, beginning with the Samaritan village, will show them how to travel the apostolic way in the spirit of Christ. What does faith mean to us? Is faith something that we utterly abandon ourselves to the love and purposes of God? Is faith something that guides us on the apostolic way in the spirit of Christ? Is faith something 
that gives us the power to live in total union with Christ in his life and in his mission in this world? Or is faith something that holds the same place in our lives as entertainment, as material possessions, as family commitments? Has faith become for us something that we call upon only in times of crisis? And when life seems to be going well, we neglect to nurture and deepen that gift of God. What would we say to Jesus if he came up to us today and said, follow me? What would Jesus say to us if we offered up only excuses? Richard Schaefer writes, faith can be expressed and experienced in a lot of different ways. But there comes a time in each one's journey when it is necessary clearly and unequivocally to declare the depth of that commitment. God's place in our lives is neither a matter of convenience nor something that can be taken for granted or assumed. As our faith grows and matures, our life in Christ slowly merges with our life in the world. We come to realize that living by the way is more than just a private endeavor, no matter how meaningful. In order to have true meaning and integrity, it must be our identity. We must recognize and live it in every part of our being. No matter what our gifts or in our gifts or imperfections the mature christian must willingly walk alongside jesus even if that journey compels us to make difficult choices that a more secular existence might otherwise avoid the path of discipleship is not necessarily a cake But it is also not a path that you have to walk by yourself. Our Lord demands of us our whole commitment to him, just as he was singularly committed to his mission by setting his face face on Jerusalem. But with his high expectations also comes the knowledge that we do not have to walk this journey of faith alone. We are always and forever surrounded and uplifted and nurtured in faith by God's Holy Spirit, which is made manifest in this community of faith, the church. As Christ's disciples and as the body of Christ, we are empowered to set our faces on Jerusalem and to utterly abandon ourselves in the love and the purposes of our living, loving Thanks be to God for Christ's invitation to all of us to come and follow him. Amen.
affirm our faith using the words of a brief statement of faith, which you'll find printed in your bulletin. In life and in death, we belong to God. Through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, we trust in the one triune God, the Holy One of Israel, whom alone we worship and serve. We trust in Jesus Christ, fully human, fully God. Jesus proclaimed the reign of God, preaching good news to the poor and release to the captives, teaching by word and deed and blessing the children, healing the sick and binding up the brokenhearted, eating with outcasts, forgiving sinners, and calling all to repent and believe the gospel. Unjustly condemned for blasphemy and sedition, Jesus was crucified, suffering the depths of human pain and giving his life for the sins of the world. God raised this Jesus from the dead, vindicating his sinless life, breaking the power of sin and evil, delivering us from death to life eternal. Amen. You may be seated. It is our great joy this morning that we have the chance to welcome Shedla Justinville, who is one of our mission partners from Haiti, who is here uh, visiting in the United States and happened to be in Raleigh today. And Kathy said, hey, could it be a chance for Shedlin to come and share some words of greeting? And I said, absolutely, let's, let's invite. So Shedlin, would you please come forward? We are so, he's gonna share some words of greeting and, and the ministry that is happening in Haiti with the, the orphanage there. And we ask that we're grateful that he has this chance to be with us. And I will remind you that after worship, if anyone would like to join us, we're gonna be having lunch at Amedio's uh, after worship. So you're welcome to join us and Shedlin a chance to get to know him and talk more about that. Welcome. Welcome, Shadow Man. Thank you. It's a really good pleasure for me to see you. And Pastor Frank, I've been coming here for like 16 years, and when I look at the people, their faces, they don't change. They say young, <laughs> beautiful, and you can see the glory of God shine on, your, on their faces. So I really appreciate that. All the glory to God. But I'm getting a lot of gray hair. So, and I am so, I was so happy to worship with you this morning. And I brought you greetings from my wonderful wife and son. I brought you greetings from the wonderful children, children who are living at the children's home in Haiti, where you see a family home. And I brought you greetings from, um, Christian Assembly Elim, the church that I am leading for the Lord. So um, everybody is fine, everybody is happy and healthy. My family is living in the Dominican Republic for security issues because we were a target to the kidnappers and mafia that took off over the, the, the country for over 10 years. I visit my family two times a month, and uh, anytime God brings things back to normal, uh, the family will get back together to continue our ministry there. And as you know, as mission partners, I have to tell you what happened, what's been happening in Haiti now. Haiti is, uh, is in total chaos now. The mafia has taken over the country. They are kidnapping and ransoming people. And worse, they are breaking the churches. They are breaking into the churches, kidnapping pastors and ransoming them. Many of those pastors were killed. I was about to flee the country. I was about to live as a human being. Your fear will drive you crazy. And but God, God asked me to stay. He asked me to stay and he has proved his uh, faithfulness toward me by protecting me every day, by protecting the children, the ministries. And uh, I can say he has accomplished a lot in terms of security and we can only praise God for all he has done. But he said in Psalm 91 verse 11 to 12, 
For he will command his angel concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. So based on that words, I stayed. And I said, God, this is what you said. I'm going to stay in the middle of the wilderness, in the middle of the total chaos to do your will. Despite these problems, the ministries are making serious progress. The children living at the children's home are healthy. They are growing in the words of God and learning well in school. The school is uh, functioning peacefully without interruption, while other schools and our communities have been uh, closed because they were ransomed by mafia. What they do, they uh, bring you a letter with a bullet in them. They say you have to pay that amount every weekend, and if you fail to pay it, you'll be killed. So our school, the ministry didn't get any of that. Isn't that God mercy, protection? Amen. So the children of our communities are used by the mafia because their parents cannot provide properly for them. The mafia guys are buying them just for food. Starvations, crimes, and fear took over the communities. Because of all this, God has us to strengthen the Christian education program for the church and the school. He asked us to emphasize the evangelizing program for the whole community in order to bring more people to Jesus, to reduce crimes, and to prevent children and young people from joining the mafia. This program is so effective that in the classrooms, students give their lives to Jesus every day. Every Sunday, new people join the church, and as a result, peace and security reign in our community. So we can say other communities get into the big chaos, but our community is still very safe, and people come to Jesus. And that wonderful job we are doing there is wonderful, is nice, is because of your uh, tremendous support here. And it's been 16 years since Western Boval sent team and supports there. And all those supports were used to change the community so we can have a better Haiti, starting by our community. And the program is to go to the other communities to bring changes. But we have a lot of challenges to face because we, have, we need uh, a lot of leadership trainings. And we need to build a bigger church structure. Currently, the church is, is, is uh, we get together in a temporary structure. And it is full already. We need to be a bigger structure. And we need more benches. We just build um, a space where 100 children get together to worship the Lord every Sunday, and we need benches for that space. We need more benches for the school, and we need to build three more classrooms. And also, we need to finally, we, we, we realize that. We give a meal to the, to the kids in the church every Sunday. And we realize that adult, the adults, some of them go and eat with them. And when, when we investigate, we realize that they go hungry, they are starving. And to get the focus, the Lord asks us to feed them too. So we begin to give a meal a day to the church people. And we realize through the weeks, because they cannot go work to work, all those insecurity, they cannot work properly to take care of the family, they go hungry. And we are praying the Lord to help us feed the children, or to, uh, um, the church people, or to address their physical needs. We are Praying the Lord so he can provide for that. So uh, our work in Haiti is wonderful. We are saving many lives and we are winning a, a whole community for Christ. All these works was, were possible thanks to the supports of missionaries, um, uh, thanks to the supports of uh, friends here. And uh, we want to thank you for 
all your support, all your uh, prayers and everything you do and you will continue to do for the ministry there. So we ask that you can continue to pray for us. Please pray for us, pray for the churches in Haiti so we understand that our struggle is not against flesh and blood but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of, of this dark world and against the spiritual forces and evil and the heavenly realm. May God bless you. May God continue to keep you healthy, continue to keep you young, and may God uh, be with you forever. God bless you. Shailen, we will continue to hold you all in our prayers and all that you do, the good work you do there in Haiti. And we look forward to the time when we can go in person again and be there and be partners together. So we come now to a time when we share our joys and concerns. I wanted to begin first by just asking, Stephen, would you come up here a minute? We have been, we have been grateful this past several, gosh, how long has it been? Uh, two, two and a half months, I think, uh, that Stephen has been our photographer doing our pictorial directory each, each Sunday. And, and I, we want to say it's just a word of this is our, a small sign of our gratitude for all that you've been doing and helping us in this way. Thank you. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Today's his last day. <laughs> Any, any pictures from now on, it's, it, you will be taking them. Yeah, Becky will be taking them and coming to your house. So, Let me share uh, some joys and concerns, and then I think Suzanne's in the back, and if anyone has a joy or concern to share, just raise your hand, and we'll bring the microphone to you so that we might all be able to hear. Um, I want to just say as well, it's great to have Nita Brinkley with us today. She is back after having recovered from her broken bone in her leg, and we're so glad you're back and doing well. It's so good to see you. Yeah. Um, we would also ask uh, for prayers um, uh, for Holly Webster. Holly continues to struggle with migraines and has another two weeks to go until she can, is, a, is able to try a new treatment. And so please keep Holly in your prayers. We remember Kathy Huffstetler, who is actually an elder at West Raleigh Presbyterian Church, but is a close friend to many in our congregation, especially with the Biblical Justice Forum. Uh, Kathy will be having back surgery tomorrow uh, to repair a ruptured disc, so please keep her in your prayers that that all goes well. Uh, we remember Joe Farrell, who was a close friend of Becky and Joe Burmester, uh, who, was, who died uh, this past week following a long illness. Even though it was a long illness, it was still a sudden death. And so please re keep Joe's family and friends in your prayers as they grieve his loss. Um, we remember the members of our scout troop 398 who hopefully are coming back today. Is that correct? Is that the plan? Um, Allison heard from Kevin like Friday. They were at the top of the mountain, so they had cell service. Um, and they, they're all still together. They're all healthy. <laughs> there have been some adventures along the way, which would be expected, but they're out in Philmont Ranch, New Mexico, and they've had an ex awesome experience and will be coming back today, so we pray for their safe travels. And we look forward to hearing about their experiences and all the, how that has changed them. And then finally, I would ask that um, obviously our country, you know, we experience in light of the Supreme Court decision on Friday, would just ask that we continue and to hold in prayer uh, the deep impact that that decision will have on the medical care for millions of women in our country, uh, especially those women of color and those who are poor. Um, and we ask God to bring wisdom to our elected leaders um, that they might make decisions moving forward that allow all of God's children children, youth, and adults to live abundantly as God's beloved people. Are there other uh, prayers that you would wish to mention that we might share them as a people of God? Yes, Kathy. Actually, I'll ask Suzanne to bring that forward. I'd just like to ask certainly for prayers uh, for Shedlin for his continued journeys until he returns home in July, but also for his wife, Sophie, mm -hmm. who is having surgery in the Dominican Republic on July 11th. Mm -hmm. And so blessings to her and, and hope that it goes well. Amen. We will hold Sophie in our prayers. Thank you. Hey, I wanted to thank everybody for all the prayers, calls, mm -hmm 
cards. Greg's doing great. Yeah. And um, it's just been, we, we've felt your love and support. Thank you. We're, we're grateful for Greg's successful surgery. Now we pray for you, Shirley, <laughs> as you await your surgery later in the summer for your knee replacement. We're grateful for that. Yeah. yeah. Anyone else? Good. We'll lift all of these up to God in prayer. Today's prayer will be a responsive one. When I say, Lord, in your mercy, I invite you to say, hear our prayers. Let us pray. Oh God, we pray for your creation. All the earth and every grain of sand in it, may we love every leaf, every ray of your light. May we love the animals. You have given them the rudiments of thought and joy untroubled. Let us not trouble it. Let us not harass them. Let us not deprive them of their happiness. Let us not work against your intent. For we acknowledge unto you that all is like an ocean, all is flowing and blending, and that to withhold any measure of love from anything in your universe is to withhold the same measure from you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Let us pray for peace and unity. O oh God, you love justice and you want peace on earth. We bring before you the disunity of today's world, the absurd violence and the many wars which are breaking the courage of the peoples of the world. Militarism, which threatens life on the planet, human greed and injustice which breed hatred and strife. Send your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Teach us to be compassionate toward the whole human family. Strengthen the will of all those who fight for justice and for peace. Lead all nations into the path of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for the church. Almighty and ever-living God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, we pray for this congregation and the church at large. Strengthen the faithful, restore the penitent, grant us all things necessary for our common life, and bring us all to be of one heart and mind within your holy church through Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers we pray for people O lord who are in some kind of strife it might be illness it might be conflict it might be loneliness we pray for them all there are days when the burdens we carry can become heavy on our shoulders and weigh us down when the road seems dreary and endless the sky is gray and threatening when our lives have no music in them and our hearts are lonely and our souls have lost their courage. Flood the path with light. Turn our eyes to where the skies are full of promise. Turn our hearts to brave music. Give us the sense of comradeship with heroes and saints of every age and so quicken our spirits that we may be able to encourage the souls of all who journey with us on the road of life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For those in need of healing, O oh Lord, you be the medicine when they are sick. Let you be their strength when we need help. Yet you let you be the life itself when they are fearful of death. Let you be the way when they long for heaven. Yet you be the light when all seems dark. And you the food when we need nourishment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For we offer them in the name of the one who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As Jesus set his face toward Jerusalem to offer himself for the sake of the world, let us now offer to God our lives and the gifts which we bring this day.
Take these gifts, O God, for the work of this church. Let them stand as signs of your love and faithfulness. In the name of the one who gave himself for us, we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 726. Will you come and follow me? We will sing verses 1, 2, and 5. go from this place in peace, trust, and serve the Lord. The love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each of you now and always. Amen.